Hi everyone, this is Amir from Amir and Amida, for those who don't know. And uh, I'm here to present a project in Bangalore. Uh, this started in 2019. Uh, I was sitting in office and I got a call from Hyderabadis who had actually taken a space in Bangalore for a microbrewery. I was very excited. I spoke to them and like most architects are, Budget kya hai? He says 30. So I said 30 what? So he said 30 crores. So I was like, oh my god, man, this is something else. You know, I have to check this place out. So I reached Bangalore and uh, I was very excited. It was a long journey to Whitefield. And this is what I first saw. It was a very old building, and the building was it had walls around it. It was an old garment factory, four floors, uh, built in 1984. What I actually thought was that I'm supposed to design this structure uh, and the budget was fabulous and uh, it got me thinking. Till the clients that told me that it was not this building alone, it was the building at the back which had to be demolished. And the land was totally two acres and not the 800 square yards on what the building stands on. Suddenly the 30 crores looked like a minuscule budget and I didn't know what to do. But we did take the project and uh, this is what the place looked like from inside. So four levels of concrete with Thankfully, beams and not a load-bearing structure because in the 80s, a lot of buildings were made load-bearing. So this is the space during construction. This is the plans. I do a lot of doodling because my sketches are horrible. So this is for the team and this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to break open all the slabs. So we started with breakages of all the slabs. So now we had a space inside, a front yard and a backyard. So it was divided into three zones. So I started breaking open all the slabs to see how high I could go because I wanted to reduce the square footage of the space because we had ample space at the back and we had ample space in front. And with that kind of a budget, I had to make use of less floor plate so that I could possibly have a lot of budget to play. The backyard then we realized we worked with a Hyderabad based uh, landscapist, landscape architect, Naveen Associates, who is a very close friend of mine. And I told him, you know, you have to eat into the floor plate there. And the only way we can eat into this floor plate is by uh, getting a huge water feature in the cent central area, which he agreed to. And to capture the space, we used an upper deck where people would possibly go and uh, could possibly hang out on the upper deck and the lower deck during the rains. And then we had the basic water feature, which was on two and a half thousand square yards. So we started with basic tanks. And during this time, a couple of months passed and we had COVID. We had the pandemic. We, to strategize the movement of the project, we made sure that there were 300 workers who only lived inside the project and would not go out and that would be the only way we could possibly finish this huge project. Once we had this structure, which was four levels with only trellis beams, I had to fill the structure with something. So we worked with a parametric form, which we made with metal angles and weather text boards. We started with a basic sketch. So the only form of parametric, though I'm so fascinated about parametric design, the only way I can do go about it is horizontal and vertical. And then I move with different heights to form shapes. So this was the first sketch which the client had preserved while I was explaining to the team uh, because it was during the pandemic. Uh, and I was stuck in Bangalore for some time. And it was all the sketches were on bill, uh, small bills, small pieces of paper. This is what we started with to fill up the space. So we had 
multiple angles the central area came down 36 feet and that was the color coordinates that we wanted to fill the space with. So we worked with a lot of angles, uh, we tried to see how it would not uh, trouble the spaces around the mezzanine floors where people would actually be sitting and we wanted this parametric sculpture to just drop down in the entire space. So this is the space uh, divided into levels, the central area totally broken exposing the four levels. We had to go for staircases, there were no support, so we used special eye sections only on five corners to support the entire staircase system, which is also a source of lighting. This is how the sampling started. We started only with simple boards to see the volume, to see the heights, to see how they would possibly look. Uh, since the space was so bare, that was the only form I could possibly do. And it had to be a central feature where uh, it took care of all the aesthetics and the budgets. This is where it all starts. So, this is the structure that, this was the final images that we came up with. The brewery now stands on the deep internal part. The flooring was all tandoor, rough tandoor which we used. Um, most of the spaces had natural light coming in. We didn't tamper with the windows at all because that would have brought the budget very high. So we remade, refurbished all the windows uh, in the old garment factory. We treated, we, we couldn't even go for any micro concrete on the, uh, so we used basic cement. And uh, one of the guys from, uh, at the site was a guy from Kerala. And he told me to, uh, he used to do this method in his village with coconut oil, where on concrete he would rub coconut oil and uh, he would get the finish, uh, de the desired finish and smoothen it out. So I think we left it all to him and also the pandemic, all he did was buy barrels of coconut oil and <laughs> do what he had to do. We used a lot of leftover metal from the site uh, to create screens. All the furniture, most of the furniture was made at site designs provided by us. What you see with the little figurines all over the place are, it is just mesh figures made by artists at site. Uh, this just depicts happiness and freedom all through the site because I was so sick of the pandemic that uh, I just wanted freedom and that's what these little figurines all over the space indicate. So, if you remember the earlier bill, that's how it started. Uh, uh, that's how we derived the parametric form uh, with different levels uh, and how we wanted it to be. All the, all the railings, everything were existing metal at site from the windows, which were grills, which we removed most of them and used for the railings. We had a lot of empty walls which we had to dress, so we used young artists to paint up the walls so that we could fill up some of the dead walls and spaces that were there in the space. So most of the lighting over here, lighting was a challenge. It was a massive place and at 2700 rupees a square foot to complete such a huge space with landscaping, lighting was going to take away a lot of the budget. So we used uh, Nilesh, a lighting consultant and designer from Bangalore, who did a fantastic job. Uh, we spent lots and lots of hours to indirectly light up the space. Uh, so that's what happened inside. But now we had a massive, massive backyard that needs to be filled up. So this is the space. So we divided the backyard with a huge water feature on two and a half thousand square yards. We divided it into two pools, uh, one was a koi pond and the other one was just a water body, uh, but it was a very filtered water body where you could dip your legs in, sit around in the edges uh, during, I mean, during the uh, brunch time and chill out. We had, we had these bridges casted over the water features 
uh, where people could actually sit. We left most of the building undisturbed. We used only Kerala roofs uh, with some color uh, so that it would get some character to the building as I had very, very less budget to work on. So the water bodies, like I said, was divided into two parts. This is the bridge, uh, the aerial area where you could possibly sit. There was another cabana here, another cabana here. There were various other cabanas on the outer periphery. Uh, we used a lot of greens only on the outer periphery. And uh, this is the upper deck. Now lighting this space also was a challenge. So we just about had enough budget for outdoor furniture. And we use Wondom, it's a Spanish company which has furniture that lights up. So we use that as a source of lighting which would possibly add to the space character. This is the space at night. So this is the same space in the day. So it transforms itself drastically in the evenings. Um, and that's what we used with maximum amount of lighting that we could do. We used a lot of linear forms, hidden forms of lights. We lit up all the planters. We lit up all the trees. Uh, we used uh, a lot of the furniture that lights up too. So that was a form of lighting for the entire space. This is a space during the day. That's the space during the night. So we spent endless hours trying to see how this project was special to me because we fought through the pandemic times, we fought budgets and today, which I, know, which I actually didn't know, it is uh, Asia's largest microbrewery. It's 1,20,000 square feet and uh, it's one of our most difficult projects but we achieved it. So we had this as an outdoor bar below the lower deck, a uh, lot of concrete form. So basically we use concrete greenery. We normally work with very minimal forms. Again, a lot of blank walls which I had to fill up. So we use young artists to see what they could do with the space. So this is the structure the old structure from 1980s where it stands today. The foliage has grown even thicker now. We have greens everywhere. The central tree is blooming. Thank you.